This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Start your 30 day free trial by clicking my link in the description. Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey and I'm back for my first video of the academic year and I'm super excited to carry on with my tricky A-level question series. Now this one is an absolute doozy. It is from June 2023, Stats Paper Edexcel and it left lots of people completely bamboozled and I've had lots of requests for it but I haven't been able to do it yet but now the paper is unlocked on Edexcel website, so I am doing this question. And if you don't know me, um, I am a multi-award winning maths teacher. I've got two national awards, don't like to brag about them. And I do A-level content, and I'm gonna help you absolutely ace your exams. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, and let's get into this question. So, Tyson is playing a game, and she uses a ball, a cup, and a spinner. Um, the random variable x represents the number the spinner lands on when it is spun and the probability distribution function of x is given by the following table. So what does this mean? When the spinner is spun, if it lands on 20, the probability of that happening is A. If it lands on 50, it has a chance probability of B. And if it lands on 80, C. And if it lands on 100, the chance of that happening probability is D. Okay, so to play the game, the spinner is spun to obtain a value of x. So you spin and then you get, for example, 80. On your first go and what does that mean it means that Tyson then stands 80 centimeters from the cup and tries to throw the ball into the cup and then the, the, the event s represents the event that Tyson successfully throws the ball into the cup so achieves the goal of getting the ball into the cup and then we've got these two horrible bits of notation which really stumps people um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let you have a go at this question so give it your best shot and I'll see you in three, two, one. Before we get to the solution, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. As someone who loves teaching maths, let me tell you that Brilliant has the power to help you learn new concepts. It's not just about watching videos, it's about doing the maths, which makes it so powerful. Take probability and statistics, for example. Brilliant's approach is all about hands-on problem solving. You're not just memorizing formulas, you're actually applying them step by step. It makes complex concepts way more intuitive and way more fun to explore. There's so many courses, lessons and problems to explore on the site, and so many of them help strengthen your understanding, which you'll need for your Maths A level. And there's a special offer for viewers of this channel. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, just by clicking the link that I'll leave in the description. And also, you get 20% off an annual premium subscription when you use my link. So give it a try, click the link, it helps up my channel, and it's a really good way of you improving your maths skills. Let's get onto the solution. Okay, so here's the solution. Uh, let's start off first with understanding um, what this first bit of notation means. So in order for us to understand that, we have to remind ourselves of the conditional probability formula. So that states that if we have the probability of A given that B has occurred, that's equal to the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. So that's one of the formulas, for, well that is the formula for conditional probability and that's one you have to know. Okay, so let's apply that now to this horrible bit of notation. So the probability that S, given that the spinner picks out a value of X, uh, so that means the probability um, that you successfully get the ball in a cup, given a particular distance that you are uh, stood from it, which was determined by the spinner, is equal to the probability of S intersection, X is equal to X, so again, this is just following the conditional probability formula all over what is given, and what is given is x is equal to x, like so. Okay, now that is equal to k over x, we're told. Okay, perfect. Now, um, this top line looks familiar because this top line here, this intersection probability, is in fact... Um, defined on the next bullet point. So what does it say? It says that it should be the same whatever value of x is obtained from the spinner. So this means that this blue uh, intersection probability 
is going to remain constant no matter what value of x we get. Okay, so let's make that the subject and see what we're left over with uh, once we've made that the subject of this equation. So we have this. This is the blue bit, and we're going to move this denominator up to the other side. So that gives me k multiplied by the probability of x is equal to x. And that's all over um, little x. Okay. So what that means is because this we're told this blue part is going to stay constant. Okay, this is not going to change no matter what value of x we, we choose. Um, then whatever x we substitute in, they should all equal the same thing because the blue bit is going to stay exactly the same. So let's see what happens when we choose x is equal to 20. Well, um, what do we get on this right hand side here when x is 20? We get k and the probability that x is equal to 20 is a. So we have a on top and that's all over x itself which is 20. Okay, what happens when x is equal to um, 50? What happens to the right hand side of this equation here? Well, we get k, the probability that x equals x is b and that's all over 50 this time. And then when x equals 80, we're going to get k c over 80. And when x equals 100, we're going to get k d over 100. Okay, so whatever value of x we substitute into this equation, this left hand side is going to be exactly the same. And the right hand side is going to be either um, this one, this one, this one, or this one, depending on which value of x we sub in. What does that mean? Well, that means that all of these must be the same because they're all equal exactly the same thing, which is the blue, the blue thing. So I can say that Ka over 20 is equal to um, Kb over 50, which is equal to Kc over 80, which is equal to Kd over 100. Now we could divide through by k on, on this these set of equations and we can also find a common denominator, well not common denominator, but we can multiply by um, the lowest common multiple which is 400 and that will give us 20a is equal to 8b which is equal to 5c which is equal to 4d and that just makes it nice and easy. Okay great. Now what have we been actually asked to prove? We've been asked to prove that C is equal to 8 over 5B. For two marks! Crazy. Okay, so let's look at this part of this set of equations. And we can rearrange that to make C the subject, just dividing both sides by 8. So that's going to give me, no, sorry, by 5, which is going to give me 8 over 5B is equal to C which is exactly what we need to show. So there we go, part A has been completed. Wowza. Okay, so for part B, we need to find the full distribution, which basically means we need to find values for A, B, C, and D. Now what we know from a discrete random variable like this is that the probabilities will always sum to one. So we know that A plus B plus C plus D will equal to one. So we can um, use this equation uh, and substitute in what we know already. We already have a value uh, for C in terms of B. So let's rewrite this as A plus um, B plus C. Well, rather than writing C, we're going to sub it out for 8 over 5B. Uh, plus D is equal to 1. Okay, so now we need a value of A uh, in terms of B, which we can substitute in. Well, we know that 20a is equal to um, 8b, so therefore a dividing by 20 is going to give me 2 fifths b. Okay, great, so we can rewrite this equation as 2 fifths b plus b plus 8 fifths b, and then we just need to replace d, um, which in terms of b 
we know that 8b is equal to 4d. Again, using this equation here, or this set of equations here, we can say that 8b is equal to 4d, uh, which means that 2b is equal to 1d. So we can sub that in as well. And now we've got this equation, which is only in terms of b, um, which we can simplify. We've got 1 and 2 makes 3. And these fractions here make 10 over 5, which is 2. So that's a total of 5b is equal to 1. So we know that now b is equal to 1 fifth. OK, great. Um, and now we can just use um, these equations we have on the side here, this one, this one, and this one, to get values of a. So a is 2 fifths times b, which is 1 fifth. So a is equal to um, 2 over 25. And we know that C is equal to 8 fifths B. So C is equal to 8 fifths and B is 1 fifths. So that makes 8 over 25. And then we also know that um, 2B is equal to D. So therefore 2 times 1 fifth is equal to D. So D is equal to 2 fifths. Perfect. So all that's left to do is actually to find the distribution of x. So I think we need to actually draw the distribution out. Um, so we would write here x. We would write the probability that capital X is equal to little x. Uh, 20 is the first um, value and that probability is a, which is 2 out of 25. And then the next one is 50, which is uh, 1 out of 5. And then we have 80, which is um, 8 out of 25. And then the last one we have is 100, which is 2 fifths. And that is the distribution. And that is full marks Bosch. OK, next question, C, which is a real cheeky question because like for one mark, You've got to do a lot of work for one mark. Anyway, Nav tries a large number of times to throw the ball into the cup from a distance of 100 centimetre. OK, a large number of times, that's important. It means that we can trust this probability. Um, he successfully gets the ball into the cup 30% of the time. So we're going to assume that the probability uh, that he successfully gets the ball into the cup, so S, given that he stands a distance away of 100 um, is going to equal 30% uh, or 0 0.3. So that's the assumption that we've just been told. Um, and now it says state giving a reason why Tyson's model of this game is not suitable to describe nav playing the game for all values of x. That's really important. We know from our information that this should be um, equal to k over x, where k is a constant. So uh, if that's equal to k over x, then we have k over x is equal to 0 0.3. And the x that we used in this particular situation was 100. So this tells me that k over 100 equals 0 0.3, which means that k is equal to 30. Now, um, does that work for all values of x? Because um, apparently it doesn't. So it worked for, or at least we've, we've used the assumption for when x is 100. So let's try the other extreme when x is 20 uh, and see what happens when x is equal to 20 um, uh, using the k value, which we're told is definitely constant. So it shouldn't change. OK, so when x is 20 we have that the probability that s, given that x is 20, is equal to, again, same thing, it should be k over x, which is 30, we know k is, over the x value this time around is 20, and that's equal to 1.5. And that is not possible, because we can't have a probability greater than um, um, uh, 1. So not possible for um, x equals 20 as shown. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And remember to click that link to get that 30 day free trial on brilliant.org. It's a great website and it will help out my channel. Bye for now.